Well, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you for this day. It don't matter how it looks like or it feels like, we are still grateful to you and thank you. Keeping us alive, nothing of me, everything of you, Father, Holy Spirit, take control. Use this lips of clay to bless your people. Let revelation knowledge increase and abound over your people, even as we get into your word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you are still breathing, shout a big amen wherever you are. This is Patrick Quinn bringing you Faith Moment, a platform that brings you understanding of God's word for your increase and for you to live a better life. The life in which God has prepared for those who love him and for those whom he has called according to his purpose. And so um, join me this and every day, Monday through Friday, 10 Eastern Times, Eastern and 9 Central, 2 GMT, and wherever you are, may the Lord be, be a blessing to you, even as you come on this platform. Amen. Now, we've been dealing and talking about the um, uh, some essential parts um, of our Christian life as believers. And uh, one of the um, areas in which we've been looking at as of yesterday, this throughout this week, is the area of baptism. Baptism is one of the components of the Christian life. Baptism is one of the ordinances of the Christian life. Baptism is one of the, the tools that complete us as believers. And so therefore, we've been looking at this baptism. We look at um, the baptism, the Holy Spirit. We're talking about the baptism of the, um, the water, the immersion. We believe in the immersion. Um, the water baptism by immersion. We believe that. We believe that. Now, uh, these are some of the components that package us to have a full uh, load of or loaf of who we are in Christ. Christ Himself um, gave us so many examples to follow, and we see. So we, we, today we're going to be looking at uh, several examples of the baptism. Several examples of the baptism. Uh, the most important one is the baptism of Jesus Christ himself, our Lord and Savior. The Master himself was baptized by John, and um, we'll be looking at that among other people uh, to affirm and confirm the ordinance of baptism. And that, beloved, it's important, like I said yesterday, uh, baptism is not an optional thing for the believer. It's not an optional thing. All right, and so we're talking about baptism, and some that is something you must um, you must um, engage yourself in. Very important. Now, it, it's it's um, when we talk about um, putting on the whole armor, uh, so that you will be able to withstand against the wiles of the the enemy. It's as equal as understanding that there are so many there are there are the things that you as a Christian supposed to have, you cannot um, have one and leave the other. If you put on your uniform and don't put on the belt to hold the uniform, your pants, your pants is going to fall down. If you put on the uniform and, uh, you know, don't complete with your the cap or the hat on, you look incomplete. If you just have a gun, you know, on you without the uniform, you also incomplete. There are things that we must have. It's there for our completion. Are you listening? And it's very important. Some of these things we overlook it, but we cannot overlook it because those are the things I believe the enemy takes advantage over us. Because if you do not know that these are the things that makes you complete, then you have you have a half low or half of the glass and uh, you you drink and you're still thirsty why because you you don't have the full the fullness of what you need now when we talk about baptism it's equ it's as equally important as having the um, the the holy spirit with you know uh, uh, with you it's as it's as equal it's, are so imp it's just important, period. And that is why it's not an optional thing for the believer. 
It's a must. You must be baptized. Jesus, our master, was baptized. Why was he baptized? Just to show you and I the importance of the baptism and um, 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 uh, so, and for with him, he did that to subject himself to the Father. And so there are so many examples of baptism that we, we're going to be looking at today. All right. And I pray that um, you um, take your, your Bibles with you. If you don't have that, please take a pen and notepads and um, take these notes now and please read them later. It will benefit you. It will increase you. It will open your understanding so that you will become a better person in your work with God. All right. Now. Um, in come with me to Matthew the third chapter the third chapter let's start with the master himself Matthew the third chapter the 13th verse all right to see the importance of the baptism that I'm talking about where Jesus was even concerned let's start with the master himself Matthew chapter 3 Matthew chapter 3 uh, verse um, 13 now look at verse 13 with me then Jesus came from Galilee to John, all right, John his cousin, at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John, we call him John the Baptist, the Baptist, all right. John was baptizing people uh, concerning the, the, um, their salvation from, you know, from sin. And so the um, Bible says that Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan, the river Jordan, to be baptized by John. When John was baptizing people, verse 14 says, And John tried to prevent, watch this now, John tried to prevent Jesus um, by receiving the baptism and saying that I have an I John have a need to be baptized by you Jesus and you are coming to me to be baptized verse 15 says but Jesus answered and said to John permit it to be so now for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness good morning to every one of you under the sound of my voice Helmet Rama, God bless you. Please share this broadcast, talk somebody, and be a blessing. Amen. Now, we're talking about the water baptism, the importance of baptism. And so we're looking at some examples of baptism today. Now, we are saying that Bible's telling you and I that Jesus was a perfect example of this baptism. And uh, we are in chapter 3 and verse 13 of Matthew starting with Matthew, all right, that Jesus came to be baptized by John. Jesus came to be baptized by John, and when he came to be baptized by John, John says, no, I should be baptized by you. And Jesus is saying that, John, no, 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 just let, let's permit this to be so for now, uh, for us to fulfill um, uh, all righteousness. Okay. Watch this now. Then he, John allowed Jesus to be, um, Jesus allowed John to baptize him. Now verse 16 says, then Jesus, when he had been baptized, beloved, I want to stress this enough in your hearing that Jesus was baptized. Jesus was baptized in water he was immersed in water if the baptism of of uh, of uh, immersion of in water is not important jesus wouldn't have done it now jesus didn't have to come to john for him to do that he could have just go ahead and start his ministry and john allowed john to do his ministry also but he came to subject himself all right, to that, that if you if you will, to that humiliation in, in, in humbling himself for that to be done. As an example for you and I to know that it's, it's very important. It's not an optional stuff. It's not optional. All right. 
So when Jesus, verse 16 says, when Jesus, he had been baptized, came up immediately, immediately from the water. Jesus came out of the water. And behold, the heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly, verse 17, a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. All right? So the baptism, the, the water baptism is very, very important. I have been in the in the River Jordan myself baptizing baptizing people in there. All right. Now, if it was not important, if if baptism was not important, Jesus wouldn't have done that. He would not have done that. Could you God bless you? All right. He wouldn't have done that. So Jesus gave us an example of the importance of baptism. When Listen, now you realize that Jesus was not, was not baptized when he was a baby. He came to be baptized at the older age when there was understanding of the baptism. To show you and I that we need to be baptized. If Jesus himself was baptized, what makes you think that you don't need to be baptized? And then you see that when he was baptized... Verse, um, verse, um, verse 1 of chapter 4 says, Then the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, then led him into starting the ministry. So baptism is very, very important, beloved. It's not an option, okay, in the life of the believer. It, you don't have no option. And we're not talking about sprinkling of water. As some of the, of the, of the leaders have done, and uh, try to equate that with your salvation. No, it's wrong. It's not right. It's not so. It's, it's not that is not what we see here in the Bible. There's nothing like sprinkling of water for as a as a form of baptizing people. No, <clears throat> baptism. We're talking about immersion. Water baptism by immersion, getting in there and coming out. When you get in there. You, you just put all to death. You come out, you come out alive. All right. As we will be seeing some scriptures here too. So we, I want to show you some examples today about the baptism. And so the first one, as we're talking about here, is from the master himself. Jesus was baptized. Look at verse 16 again. I want to stress this. Verse, verse 13, sorry, of Matthew chapter 3. That Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan River to be baptized, where John was baptizing people. Jesus came to be baptized. And 16 says, when Jesus had been baptized, came up immediately from the water. There wasn't water sprinkled on Jesus. Jesus came out of the water and um, we see the rest over here write these scriptures down and please read them and read them again and so the records um the bible uh, records the the the, uh, the importance of the point uh that we're making here all right that it's important for you to be baptized the greek word for of baptism it's baptizo baptizo which means dip or submerge dip baptizo baptize baptism came from the greek word baptizo meaning you to dip into something not to sprinkle or to submerge into something and we're talking about water here so it's not about sprinkling you know water on you to say that you have been baptized, I baptize you, and I baptize you by sprinkling some water on you, and that. No, that is not the right thing to do. That is not the right thing. Okay? So let's stick to the right things, and don't, um, you know, take all these other Gospels from, from anybody else, because that is not so. All right? So we're talking about <clears throat> the importance of baptism. Now, um, um, Jesus, of course, of course, this was 
was, was public, okay? Was public. Everybody saw that. Everybody saw that. The importance of baptism as Jesus demonstrated uh, to us. Come with me to the book of um, uh, Luke chapter, th chapter 3 also. Uh, look at verse, verse 21. Uh, Luke chapter 3 as well. Verse 21. <clears throat> all right. Now, when all the people were baptized, now look at this now. Look at this now. Again, when all the people were baptized, eh, it came to pass that Jesus was also baptized. Now, I'm showing you that again. I want to stress this in, you know, into your hearing about the importance of baptism where even Jesus was concerned. When the people were baptized, Jesus also came to be baptized. Now, if Jesus didn't see the importance of baptism, why did he subject himself to that? He came to be baptized, the Bible says. And while he prayed, the Holy Spirit came down. The important thing I want to stress here is that he says that he came to be baptized. Jesus came to be baptized. You have to be baptized. Beloved, you have to be baptized. Now, this is an ordinance of God. Now, what God has put in place, don't try to change it. Don't try to change it, beloved. There's a scripture in Revelations, I believe, that um, um, it talks about when you change the things or when you move or, or take um, things out of God's word, God will take you out. Something like that, I, I, I'll, I'll check and, and, um, and confirm that with you. All right? Don't take anything out and don't put nothing in. This is very important. All right? So if you don't believe it, if you don't believe it yet, then see why it's important for you to believe it and do it because it is an ordinance of God. Now, why do you want to change the ordinance of God? We're talking about immersion, not sprinkling of water on your head and say that you are baptized. No, immersion. Are you listening? And so Jesus himself was baptized and now, if uh, we want, <clears throat> I want to start with Jesus and then go on. Today, like I said, we're going to be looking at some um, examples of baptism. Now, in the in the in the um, in the days of the Pentecost, when the Pentecost had come, after which Peter, you know, you know, gave his first sermon, as I call it. All right. After that, almost about three thousand people gave their life to Jesus, and then they were baptized. And then they were baptized. The early church. Early church, were they were baptized in water. The new converts of the early church were baptized in water. In water. They did not sprinkle water on them. They were baptized in, not outside, water. Beloved, this is very important. For you to understand this, you have to be baptized by the Im by immersion. Come with me. Um, come with me to Acts chapter two, verse forty-one. Let's let's look at some scriptures here. Acts chapter two. Acts chapter two, verse forty-one. Now I want you to stay with me from here on in the book of Acts, because I, I I believe I'm. I'm, I'm led to stay in the book of Acts. We're going to see a lot of examples over here. Acts chapter 2. Look at verse, um, verse uh, 41. Then those who gladly receive his word were baptized. And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. I, I just spoke to you about that. That when Peter has, uh, give, has given his first sermon as to uh, the Pentecost and all that, 3,000 people gave their life to the Lord. 3,000 people. And when they gave their life to the Lord, they were baptized. Look at verse 41 of uh, Acts chapter chapter 2. Those who gladly, gladly receive his word, which word, the word of um, that uh, Peter was spoken, they were baptized. 
they were baptized. And they, and that day, about 3,000, like I said, about 3,000 people gave their life to the Lord. Glory be to God. Baptism is very important in the believer's life. Baptism, and no, we're not talking about sprinkling of water. It's not, we're not talking about sprinkling of water, we're talking about immersion. So but you see the importance of baptism? Now ask yourself, have I been baptized since I gave my life to the Lord Jesus? If not, you should be baptized. Yes, it's part of the package. As a matter of fact, it's one, it's, 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 the, it's the, the two ordinances that Jesus gave to the church before he departed. Like I mentioned, the first one yesterday I mentioned to you was um, um, the, 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 what we call the Lord's Supper, commonly known as the communion. That is an ordinance, powerful ordinance. And then come to baptism. And we see Jesus himself giving us the example of the importance of baptism. Are you listening to me? Talking about water baptism, for which he, Jesus, came to the river Jordan for John to baptize him. As John was baptizing a lot of people, Jesus also came. Again, I'm, I'm, I just said that Jesus didn't have to come to, to be baptized to start his ministry, but the, he, he did that to show you and I the importance of baptism, that every believer, when you have received him as your Lord and Savior, you must be baptized. It's a symbol of our obedience and humility. As he himself subjected himself to, to the Father. Are you listening? So it's very important when we talk about baptism. And here we see that the early church, the early converts, the early people who gave their life to Jesus um, were baptized. About 3,000 of them when Peter had, had spoken after the Pentecost. About 3,000 of them, the Bible says. All right? And so and so this is, this is very important. Now we're going to, again, I want to show you today several examples of the importance of baptism. Now, come to um, Acts chapter 8. Stay with me in the book of Acts today. All right? Stay, stay there. Don't go nowhere. Acts chapter 8, verse 12. Look at something here now. Acts chapter 8, verse 12. Okay? Acts chapter 8, verse 12. Now, we talk about this is where Philip uh, was witnessing uh, to the, Samar the Samaritans. All right. And then some of these people in Samaria received the baptism when they, 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 they got the word. Acts chapter, chapter 8. All right. Look at Acts chapter 8. Look at verse 12. But when they believe, see, you, you see, the reason why some people, are, you know, in some churches are sprinkling water instead of the immersion is I don't think they believe, they truly believe it. So they, 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 they equate that with your salvation. That's wrong. It's wrong. No. 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 Now, when Philip, uh, you know, uh, preached to his people, uh, in the, those in Samaria, Bible says, verse 12 says, but when they believe Philip, as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God, and... Um, uh, the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. God bless you, um, Apostle uh, Albert. All right. Both men, let's read that again. Look at verse 12. But when they believe, P, uh, when they believe uh, Philip, as he preached, Philip preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. They received the baptism. They received the baptism. Are you listening? They received the baptism. Now, when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they also sent for Peter and John to them. They sent for Peter and John to them also for them to also, you know, um, get the word and be baptized. So we see here also that those in Samaria now 
has have also received um, uh, the, the baptism. Now, Paul in the in the in the, um, the same uh, book of Acts, the the nineteenth chapter or the ninth chapter. Paul in the book of the um, the uh, in the book of Acts. Go with me the next page, which is chapter nine. I'm teaching. I'm not preaching. I'm just teaching you and bringing you to a place of understanding of the importance of baptism. Okay, and so it's not going to be one of those um, uh, things that will just let you jump and praise the Lord and Hallelujah and all those things. I'm I'm putting something in your mind for you to know the importance of what you may be missing if you have not already. Um, um, engage yourself in that if you have not already already put yourself in that you have not already received the baptism then you have to consider seriously in doing that um, Acts chapter 9 is that what I said yeah Acts chapter 9 verse um, verse 18 look at Acts chapter 9 verse 18 all right Acts chapter 9 verse 18 now this is um, um, this is about Saul, okay? This is about Saul when you know he um, uh, had an encounter with God, and um, um, he you know was converted. When when after his conversion, the Spirit came upon him. He was filled with the Spirit. Now watch this. Now uh, when Jesus, I mean uh, God, has uh, spoken to Ananias. You know to go and um, and minister to him. Now, uh, verse nineteen uh, is that what I said? Verse eighteen. Look at verse eighteen. Now, immediately there fell from his eyes, okay, something like scales, and he received his sight. This is uh, Saul was blinded. He, he was he was blinded, and uh, um, um, God sent Ananias to go. And minister to him and uh, touch him and um, all that. Read it, please read it, and so that you can have a clear understanding. Some of you have itchy ears. You just like to, you know, be told about stories and uh, told about things. Read it for yourself. All right. Listen, my ministry is to uh, is to empower you. All right, to bring you to that place of having a clear understanding. You will not have an understanding if you don't read yourself. You will not have an understanding. You will hear me, but you will not have a personal understanding to this. Wherefore, when you meet a situation, you can engage what you understand. And so it's important for you to read. Read it. Now, so here, um, Scripture says that uh, when, Ananias, <coughs> when Ananias has done what God has, has told him to do and all that, immediately, look at verse 18, immediately there, there fell from uh, Saul's eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once. And he, Saul, arose and was baptized. Saul was baptized. Shalom to you now. All right. Saul was baptized after he received his sight. He was baptized. And when he had received food, he was strengthened. Then Saul spent some days with the disciples at, at Damascus. Now remember, Saul was going there to receive um, permission, you know, to, to destroy God's people. But of course, you know, God, you know, dealt with him uh, on, on his way to Damascus. And the rest is what you, you see there uh, concerning his conversion. And then he became, you know, um, a disciple, an apostle of God. Now, the, the area and important thing I'm pointing to you today is the importance of baptism. Beloved, if you have not been baptized, you have to be baptized. If you have not been baptized, yes, you have to be baptized. So I'm showing you some examples of the importance of baptism in the life of you, the believer. You are a believer of what? The believer of Jesus Christ. Everyone who receive the um, the word and believe the word of Jesus was baptized. You have to be baptized. It's an ordinance of God. 
It's an ordinance of God. Now, um, well, Jesus has, uh, uh, he did, uh, he has, fin uh, uh, you know, uh, we, we finish his work and uh, we believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ and all that. Well, do you believe also in his ministry? Do you believe? Now, it's all about your belief. Do you believe? Now, we see that there's nothing here in, this, in the scripture where it's talking about sprinkling of water on, on you and, and declaring that you are baptized. There's nothing about sprinkling of water. It's, you see more here about the immersion, water baptism by immersion, as we see Jesus did. And so this is another, another example that when Saul had received his sight back and um, was uh, uh, converted, he was baptized. Okay, he was baptized um, <clears throat> as the other uh, believers of the early church as well when Peter had spoken um, after the Pentecost. So baptism is very important. Talking about baptism, the importance of baptism. All right, importance of baptism. Look at chap um, chapter 22, Acts chapter 22, Acts chapter 22, uh, the 16th verse. Now, after, after, um, uh, Paul, uh, Saul has received his baptism. Now he goes out and started start the, um, the ministry and came, you know, came to the the, uh, the people of the Hebrews and spoke to those people over there and they received their baptism too. Look at chapter 2, uh, chapter 22. Acts chapter 22, <clears throat> excuse me. Look at verse 16. Acts chapter 22, verse 16. And now, why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the same of calling on the name of the Lord, he says. Okay, arise. Why what are you waiting for? Ah, why? Isn't that a well, that's a wonderful question for somebody today? What are you waiting for? Arise and be baptized. Arise and be baptized. Arise and be baptized. This is this is this is um, 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 this is Saul when he addressed the the uh, the Hebrew leaders after they had all these things and they they received. He says, "What are you waiting for? Arise and be baptized." Well, somebody need to ask that question to you. What are you waiting for? Arise and be baptized. Arise and be baptized. If you listen, if you said you are born again, you have a, you are you are the believer of Jesus Christ, you must be baptized. Baptism is not an option. It's not an option. Jesus says you should be baptized. So why are you not being baptized? Again, I gave an illustration of the fact that we, a lot of believers, we are missing some components that completes us. We are missing some components in our life that completes us. So, so some things are not jiving and some things are not because we, we, we are not completely covered. In a sense that we may be wearing our pants, but there is no shirt or blouse. And then we put on a hat. Or we may, I mean, fill in the blanks. Look at Jesus himself. He was baptized. If baptism was not important, why will Jesus not just start his ministry but went to Jordan from Galilee for John to baptize him. And by the way, why wasn't Jesus baptized when he was a baby? Because he wouldn't understand what it is. When he came of age to understand what it means to be baptized, he came to be baptized. 
in water in not outside water in water not outside if you are listening to me i'm speaking to you as an apostle of god you need to be baptized it's one of the most powerful institutions god has set in place beloved don't let the devil fool you by saying otherwise be baptized go to your church go to your pastor tell him it's in the word of god if he or she has not seen it you must be baptized and if they don't believe that get out i'm telling you this is listen this is uh, this is one of the components of the believer one of the components of the believer to make you whole this is one of of your 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 one of the of your tools one of your gift one of your put it all together you need it you need it all right so look at look at look at uh, Saul after speaking to the um, the Hebrew um, the leaders look, listen verse 16 he says and now why are you waiting why are you waiting and I'm asking somebody the same question today why are you waiting Oh, maybe my church don't believe in bapt. Your church do not believe in baptism. Your church do not believe Jesus. If your church don't believe in baptism, your church don't believe in Jesus either. Because Jesus, how do you say, I believe Jesus. See, Jesus says something. He says, if you love me, obey my commandment. And Jesus says, you must be baptized. So you can't tell me that you say you love Jesus and the, 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 the name of Jesus is mentioned in your church, but they don't believe in baptism. Did Jesus abolish baptism? He came to, he, oh my goodness, Jesus came to humble himself to be baptized. John, John, when John saw Jesus coming, John, John says, oh no, 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 no. I should be baptized by you, Jesus. He knew where he knew where authority is, but yet Jesus humbled himself. He says, "No, no, no, no. Let this be so, so that all all scriptures will be fulfilled. All scriptures, all, not some. So some of you churches who are not are not fulfilling all scriptures. Be warned, all scriptures. Jesus subjected himself." To that humiliation, if you will, to that to to humble himself. So, what makes you think that baptism is something of of the past? And in order, I mean, if you if you you come out of your lazy self and and stop sprinkling water on people, talk about you. I'm baptizing you in the name of the Father. Baptize them. By immersion. Jesus, Bible says, came out of the water. Glory be to God. He came out. Now, if you don't go in, you can't come out. I, I, I'm sorry, I, I just got excited a little bit here for yelling. If you don't go in, you can't come out. Hmm. I know I spoke wisdom to somebody if you don't go in you can't come out jesus came out the bible says he came out of the water now did he go in he must have gone in to come out are you listening now remember <laughs> remember jesus was around and the heavens didn't declare that beloved, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He was around. But when he went into the water and came out, the heavens declared, Beloved, this is a mystery. There are, there are a lot of mysteries. See, the ordinances of God are full of mysteries. That's a mystery. The first institution of God, which is marriage, that's a mystery. 
where scripture says, and the two shall become one. That's a mystery. How does two become one? In our, in your, in your, in your thinking or even imagining, how does two become one? That's a mystery. Beloved, you better do it. You better do it. Get yourself baptized. Get yourself baptized. The same River Jordan, I believe it so much, so so much to every part of me that I have gone to the uh, uh, into the River Jordan a couple times, and every time I baptize people on there, I'm, I I may put um, you know uh, this year I haven't gone, but I may put uh, even some of the pictures on there for you, 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 you for some of you to see. Yes, in the River Jordan where Jesus was baptized. I have, I've been there and I've baptized, I've baptized people. I've been baptized myself. Beloved, it's important. you got to be baptized. So, he, so, so now after talking to these people, he says that, and now what are you waiting? Why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Arise. And be baptized. So you better get up and be baptized. You better get up and be baptized. Now, let's look at the house of Cornelius. In the chapter 10, Acts chapter 10, verse 48. Acts chapter 10. Like I said, stay with me in the book of Acts today. Acts chapter 10, verse 48. Look at Cornelius. He and his house were baptized. Beloved, huh, you don't, if you know the power of baptism, you, you will run quickly to be baptized. You will run quickly. Like, like Saul was asking the, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, the leaders, what are you then sitting down to? What are you sitting? Do it quick. Do it quick. Don't waste no time. Don't waste any time because, listen, you are wasting time and allowing the devil to, to bring other, other, other gospels to you by telling you otherwise. Don't waste time. Don't you waste no time. Acts chapter 10. Look at verse 48. Are you there yet? Where are you at? Verse 48. Verse 48. Verse 48. This is um, um, uh, Peter uh, preaching to the Gentiles. Okay. Now, when I give you the scriptures, please, 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 I often say this. All right. I may give you the punch lines, but write it down and start from verse one in your own study. I am a teacher of the word. I don't give you all the answers. I give you work to do so that you become a better person. If, if, if our teachers, when you went to school, if teachers gave you all the answers, you and I wouldn't be where we are. We'll be fools. But they gave, they help us to think. They help us to search and to know. And what we know cannot be taken away from us. Are you listening? What we know. What we know help us to pass the exams. And so my job is to bring you to that place of you knowing the word of God to make you a better person. When you see me tomorrow, you, you say, oh, that's my teacher. God bless you. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Look at, um, this is Peter um, preaching to the Gentiles and, and uh, they also receive, look at verse 48. Uh, the Gentiles, after they, when they were preached to by Peter, then they got converted. After their conversion, all right, uh, let's, let's start from verse 44 so that we can have a little understanding. Now, while Peter was still speaking these words to them, okay, the Holy Spirit fell upon all of those who heard the word. The Holy Spirit came, fell on them and um, those of the, of the circumcision who believed were astonished. As many as came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. Verse 46 says, For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then Peter 
answered, verse 47, Can anyone forbid water? Huh? Can anyone forbid water that these should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? Just as we have? We have received. And now look at it. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then they asked him to stay a few days with them. Now, this is, this is the house of, of Cornelius. And he commanded them to be baptized. Peter commanded them to be baptized. Take them and baptize them. They have to be baptized. Beloved, see, I think what made the early church so powerful was that they were, they were, they were close to obedience than you and I today. We are, I, I think we are so disobedient, you know, be, believers, it's, all, it's unbelievable. No wonder we not see no power. Our power is in the obedience. Our authority is in the obedience. Ah, yago shandele bohu. I tell you, our power is in the obedience. Peter said, take them and, and uh, get them baptized. The house of Cornelius was baptized. Now this was, uh, yes, after the dramatic outpouring of the Spirit of God. Oh, hallelujah. Acts chapter 16, verse 15. The household of another person is also baptized. May your household be baptized. You see, we, 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 we've come from Jesus <clears throat> as, as our master, demonstrating the importance of baptism to us, and then coming into the, the early church, about 3,000 who believe after the word came to them, received the baptism. Now coming to a, a, a persecutor, Saul, Look at the look at the picture here. Get the revelation here. Coming down down to the leaders. Okay, now to individual homes. Cornelius, his house was baptized. Look at another person whose house who, whose household was also baptized. Look at Acts chapter sixteen. Acts sixteen. Come with me. Acts chapter six. Listen. May your house be baptized. May you and your house be baptized. <laughs> Like Joshua says, me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. I don't know about you, but me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Me and my house. Oh yeah, we ain't going nowhere. We're not going to turn to nothing. It don't matter. As long as I'm the head of the house. No, trust me. No, me and my house. The house of Cornelius. Cornelius and his house. He was the head of his household. Now look at another another person whose household was was uh, received the baptism. Um, look at verse chapter sixteen, chapter sixteen of um, of uh, Acts, Acts chapter sixteen. Ah, uh, there's a there's a lady by the name of Lydia. Okay, now this was. Paul now going all over the place, you know, speaking the word of God and, and on and on and on and getting people saved and baptized. Verse 11 says, therefore, now when I give you the word again, your job is to start from verse 1. I'm giving you the punchlines. Start from verse 1 so it makes sense to you in your private study. Therefore, selling from trails, we run a straight course to Samothrace, Sa Samothrace, some of these words. And the next day came to Neapolis. And from there to Philippi, which is the former city of the part of that part of Macedonia, a colony. And we were staying in that city for some days. And on the Sabbath day, we went out of the city to the riverside where prayer was customarily made. And we sat down and spoke to the women who met there. Now a certain woman named Lydia heard us. She was a seller of purple from the city of Tatira, 
which wash, who worship, worship God. The Lord opened her heart to heed the things spoken by Paul. Verse 15. And when she and her household were baptized, she begged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. And uh, she constrained us. Now, this was after she received the word of God, believed and was converted. She and her household were baptized. They received. This is another household. You see the importance of the baptism? The Bible says, look at verse 15. And when she and her household were baptized, they were baptized. Are you and your household baptized? You, yes. Is your household baptized? You are missing out. If you are, if you are not baptized, I'm telling you, you are missing out. And you better be smart and get yourself baptized immediately. Get yourself baptized immediately. All right? Okay. Now look at, boy, time goes fast, huh? All right? Uh, they were baptized immediately. Now, look at, um, again, the same chapter 16. Look at chapter 16. Another household, a whole family was also baptized. Look at the same, stay with chapter 16. Again, look at verse um, 33. Look at verse 33. <clears throat> Let's start from verse 25 and read down quickly. All right, we're going to go beyond a little our time today. Because we, we I think about 10, mi 10 minutes today, you know, was cutting and back and forth. So we, we're going to make that time. Verse 25, all right? Now watch verse 25 of chapter 16 of Acts. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. This was uh, when Paul and Silas were put in prison. Even in prison, they were praising God. Verse 26, suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's chain were 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 loosed. Everyone's chain were loosed. I pray that somebody's all the chains that the devil has put around you will be loosed in Jesus' name, even as I speak. Hallelujah. Verse twenty-seven, and the keeper of the prison awakening from sleep. <laughs> the keeper of the prison himself was asleep. Working, um, um, and the keeper of the prison, awakening from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. Commit suicide. Verse 28 says, But Paul called with a loud voice, saying, Quote, do yourself no harm, for we are all here. End quote. Then he called for a light, ran in, and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Because you see, you guys are in you, you're supposed to be in this in this uh, practical or physical prison here. But you are more freer than me who is keeping watch over you here. You are more free. Verse 31 says, So they said to him, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Watch this now. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. And immediately he and all his house or family were baptized. Immediately. And he took the same hour. He took them the same hour of the night. 
the same time, the same hour, wash them, wash their stripes, and immediately he and all his family were baptized. They were baptized. Now when he had brought them, when he had brought them, um, when he had brought them, watch this now, now when he had brought them into his house, he set food before them and um, he rejoiced, having believed in God with all his household. Beloved, you need to have that, you and your household. This, this has to do with you and your house. You and your house, they were baptized. You see, Cornelius' house, he and his house was baptized. Lydia, he and his he and her house were baptized. The, the the keeper of the of the prisoners, he and his house, all right, that Philippian guy, he and his house were baptized. Now, Acts chapter 18, verse 8. Acts chapter um, 18, Acts chapter 18, verse 8. Those in Corinth also received baptism. Chapter 18, look at verse 8. Let's read from um, verse, that's a punchline, but read from verse 1 in your own time. Verse 7, um, Let's start from verse 5 to make a little sense. When Silas and Timothy had come from Macedonia, Paul was constrained by the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus is the Christ. Verse 6, But when they opposed him and blasphemed, he shook his garments and said to them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. From now on I will go to the Gentiles. <laughs> Thank you, Paul, for coming to us. And he departed from there and entered the house of a certain man named Justus, one who worshipped God, whose house was next door to the synagogue. Then Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his household. Beloved, with all his household. And many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized and many of the corinthians hearing what and believing what the word of god believed and they were baptized they were baptized verse 9 now the lord spoke to paul in the night by a vision uh, he said to him, do not be afraid, but speak and do not keep silent. This is what the Lord told me. I told you, you know, I mean, not too long ago, I, I mean, I used to, I was afraid of something. Some crazy stuff that came to me, unbelievable. I started this broadcast here, I think, in, was it in April or somewhere there? Because some, some, something came upon me as a result of, you know, some incident. But the Lord spoke to me, he said, son, I've never given you fear. I don't know where that is coming from. It's not coming from me. It's coming from the devil. One of the things that you have done and that one of the things that I have allowed you to do is to be baptized. You have that authority in you. Rise up! Do not be afraid. And don't keep silent. Speak. Speak. Hence, I'm here bringing you this and um, speaking everywhere. Right now, now, I'm speaking to the world. Not afraid. I can listen. I, I, you think I'm scared? I'm coming to you. Live ball, eyeball to eyeball. Trust me. You, you you better find somewhere to go. If you know what's in me, you would rather find somewhere to go. Trust me. <laughs> and the Lord spoke to Paul in the night by vision. and said, do not be afraid, but speak. And do not be silent, for I am with you. Glory be to God. And no one will attack you 
to hurt you for I have many people in the city did you hear that you devil you yeah you watch I'm coming I have many people in the city don't be afraid so now we see the importance of the baptism even in the life of the Corinthians and also Crispus and his household also receive the baptism uh, Acts chapter 19 I'm going to end here I think there's this that 10 minutes is used now Acts chapter 19 Look, let's read from verse 1 to 7 and that we'll read from verse 1 to 7 Acts chapter 19 go to the next verse and it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul haven't passed through the upper regions remember we just read about Paul there uh, came to Ephesus Ephesus and finding some disciples he said to them did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed and they said to him we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit oh poor them and he said to them into what then were you baptized so they said into John's baptism into John's baptism what was John's baptism they are received the baptism of John by water by immersion immersion everybody knows that John baptized not by sprinkling water and talking about you are baptized in, you know and all that no John imaged everyone including Jesus our Lord inside water then Paul verse 4 then Paul said John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance saying to the people that they should believe on him who will come after he John that is on Jesus and when they heard this when these disciples heard it they were baptized in the name of the word uh, in the name of the Lord and when Paul had laid hands then they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and um, they began to speak in other tongues and uh, the men were about 12 in all about 12 in all so you see the importance of the water baptism the man says yeah we've been baptized by John we received John's baptism and then even got the increase of the baptism that John himself said the one coming after him he will baptize with um, in the by the Holy Spirit and with fire are you listening beloved you need to be baptized you need to be baptized now this goes to believers and unbelievers if you are a believer and you have not been baptized you have to be baptized if you are not a believer you have to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and be baptized and so both people both sides of the coin if you have not been baptized you need to be baptized now I'm gonna start with those of you who have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior you have to receive him as your Lord and Savior and be baptized and for those of you who have received him but not been baptized you also have to consider being baptized it's very important like like Saul asked he says what are you waiting for arise and be baptized and so you want to give your life to Jesus and be born again and receive his baptism you must pray this prayer with me right now and for you who have not received the baptism but you've given your life to the Lord you must be baptized as well and so let's pray father say father in the name of Jesus I am a sinner I have received this word and I believe I am a sinner that I need your forgiveness Jesus forgive me of my sins 
come into my life. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. I receive you now. Receive me also. I believe that as I ask by faith, you have accepted me. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I thank you. Now baptize me in the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Now you need a water baptism. You need to be immersed. We listen, believers by word, by the word of God. You must be baptized in water. Okay, it's a symbol or it's our act of um, of um, of um, humbling ourselves, as we see our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did to justify his or uh, to to. To, to subject himself to the Father. Are you listening? Very, very important. So please be baptized. Now, if you just receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, find yourself a church, Bible teaching, believing church, and get yourself in there. Let the leaders of the church know that you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you need to be baptized. If they tell you they don't believe in baptism, eh? Move on. Find another church that do believe because you got to believe in this. Are you listening? Jesus, our master, demonstrated the importance, and that's why I started with him, the importance of baptism. So we've seen today lots and lots of examples of the importance of baptism. Now, what are you waiting for if you have not been baptized? Be baptized. Be baptized. It's an ordinance. Remember, it's an ordinance that Jesus even confirmed by demonstrating it. It's an ordinance to you and I. As it is, the ordinance of communion, the Lord's Supper. So please do that. Now, this is where we draw the curtain for the day. All the information you need to contact this um, ministry is here. It's scrolling right on your on your on your set, whatever set you are using, your laptop, your iPad, your cell phone. Please reach out to me. All right, reach out to us over here. Let me know that this means this. Let me know that this broadcast is blessing you. I want to hear your testimony. Don't just listen and go. Put it to work and see. If there's power behind this or not so I come your way same time thanks for listening and uh, share the broadcast please share it all right share it with your friends and uh, also to remind you that we are live instantly on Periscope Twitter the YouTube the Facebook and all that live okay live you can catch me okay the same time tomorrow God willing same time, 10 Eastern, 9 Central, 2 p.m. GMT, and uh, the rest of the world catch up. May the Lord show you His love continually. I want you to know you don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God. And in all thy getting, get understanding. When the Holy Ghost come upon you, you will do great and mighty things. to know that you don't have no trouble all you need is your faith in God and in all thy getting get understanding